Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. Welcome to Katie on the Farm. Each week, we're going to explore some aspect of food and agriculture and discover how our favorite foods get to our plate. In this first episode, we're gonna do some chores together and I'm gonna talk a little bit about my farm. Camping World of Aldosta, located in Lake Park, is your one-stop destination for all your camping needs. Stop by to see your dreams of quality time with your family become a reality. Whether it's tailgating with your air-conditioned camper, taking a trip to the mountains or beach with your family, or driving your motorhome to a faraway destination, Camping World has it all. Let us put you and your family in a camper for as little as $99 per month. And remember, when you buy a camper from Camping World of Valdosta, you receive a free Elite Good Sam membership, roadside assistance, and travel assist for one year. Carter's Fried Chicken in Homerville has become the gold standard for fried chicken barbecue and catering. Carter's also offers a full menu of other tasty items and is open on Sunday. Thanks, Chad Brown, for making dining at Carter's a family tradition in Homerville. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV. Good morning. I'm about to go do our morning chores. We're gonna make sure the chickens have gotten out all right, feed the horses, throw some hay, feed our young birds in our brooder coop, check on the guineas. They're our insect control most days. And um, we'll see what else needs to be done this morning. So this morning we're planting um, beans from Seed Savers Exchange. Uh, we're members of Seed Savers Exchange. It's an excellent program that helps preserve seed and restore seeds that are almost lost. Um, I am planting these beans about eight inches apart, which is really close together. Um, the reason for that is that the ground is never naturally bare, and so we companion plant here on the farm. Um, it'll be very intensely planted in these raised beds, uh, and that helps to choke out the weeds and helps to utilize all the space that we have. So I'm gonna start putting these in along irrigation lines that I already have established in the beds. Now, we didn't always grow like this. In fact, we didn't always do any of the things we're doing here on the farm. I grew up in the Midwest, as you might be able to tell from my lack of an accent. Um, in the Midwest, Everything was in the middle of a beautiful grid of corn that was rotated with soybeans. And as we went about our daily lives, we were both on the periphery of and completely surrounded by monocropping agriculture. And I had bought into a paradigm growing up that planting fence row to fence row, as it was put in the 70s, and monocropping cereal grains, commodity crops, um, was the most efficient way that we could grow food. I never questioned that those things really weren't food, and I never questioned quality. I never questioned the farmers who no longer farmed because they couldn't make the shift or because it wasn't economically viable for small farmers. And 
I went away to a large university in ag school, one of the best in the world, and I did a couple years in the ag program, and I thought I wanted to lobby for what we called big ag, for agribusiness, for the big giants. And so I went and got a degree in political science. And as I did that, I started, uh, I started repeating without question everything I was taught. And then I started growing up. I got married. We tried to have children. We had some minor health issues. We had some more major health issues. We successfully have had two children. And all of this has um, prompted a paradigm shift in how we look at food and food production, the entire food chain in our country and globally, the shift that's being made globally. And through the questioning, we started wondering if maybe the way we were doing things wasn't the best possible way. Maybe it wasn't the most secure way for most of the world's crops to be grown in three countries. Um, maybe we were inviting situations that man wasn't going to be able to invent his way out of. And through all of it, there was a very personal thread. The nostalgia for gardening. I had very little interest in growing my own food. I was going to be a professional and I didn't see any need to make my own bread or grow anything to eat. It was all quaint and it was all cute and it was very sweet that our parents did it. And I've changed my mind about that for many, many reasons. I'm now in the dirt every morning and um, and I care a little less about being in a business suit because there's something very fundamental about what we're doing here. So what are we doing here? All of this prattle is to say that um, I went from the idea that industrial agriculture was the future and beneficial to the idea that we need a more diversified food chain. We need a more localized food chain, and we need a more sustainable food chain. So, putting my time and my hands and my money where my mouth is, our family decided that in order to get clean and local food, the first step was to provide as much of it at home as we could. So we have chickens, we have horses that act as fertilizer machines, and recreation, and we're growing about 40% of our food. Now our diet is primarily produce, we're plant-based eaters, and so that's a substantial percentage of our food. We occasionally take food to market, and we do our best to share with everyone we encounter. Uh, but our life is very different than we envisioned. We do collect seed here on the farm, and um, since this section of the bed is planted, why don't we go over, we'll collect some collard green seeds for a friend of mine, and we'll talk about that aspect of what we do. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Dairy Queen is a proud part of our local communities and is cheering our sports teams on to championship seasons. Drop by before and after the game to say hello to Mr. Ash and his entire crew and enjoy the full Dairy Queen menu, including our famous grilled burgers, artisan style sandwiches, and chicken strips. Cool off with our renowned smoothies, slushies, malts, and iced coffees. Try our fabulous desserts and take an ice cream cake home for that special occasion. Or just to treat the family, dine in or take out at Dairy Queen locations in Homerville, Blackshire, Folkestone, and Fernandina Beach. See you at the DQ. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency is locally owned has been a part of the Homerville, Clinch County community for many years. Jeff Brown and Eric Lutz make it a priority to know their clients on a personal basis and take pride in customizing insurance coverage for the particular needs of each customer. They offer all lines of insurance including auto, home, business, life insurance, annuities, and bonds. 
Lutz, Brown, Pigler, and Manley Insurance Agency, East Dame Avenue, Homerville. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV. Now, this plant may look like it should be removed. It's not very pretty at this point. But this is a collard green plant, and it's done what we call bolting. Um, bolting is when a plant goes to seed. And what we're doing right now is we are collecting collard green seeds, not just for our garden, but for some friends of ours. Um, this is the third generation of these plants here in this soil on our farm. And so the seeds that they're producing um, create plants that are well acclimated to our very particular microbiome here. So these seeds are um, more valuable to me than the seeds that I would purchase. Um, so we're collecting, we're pulling the pods off, and there were really beautiful flowers prior to this. Um, so we pull these dried pods off and we crack them open, and there are seeds in here, little tiny black seeds, and they're very easy to knock out now that they're dried and they're mature. And You'll see anywhere from 20 to 50 seeds in a pod, depending on the variety. So we're going to collect enough for our friends each to have an envelope of them. These seeds are particularly easy to collect. Um, there are some plants that require a little more effort. Um, if you've ever had anything come up in a compost pile or a discard pile, um, like a pumpkin or watermelon vine, that is an indicator of just how easily those seeds are germinated after they've been discarded. So we're going to get about 100 seeds per person, which doesn't take real long. And once we've gotten our fill of the seeds this year, then these plants are going to be cut off at the base. I'm going to leave the roots in the ground. There's spiders on me. I'm going to leave the roots in the ground because they will break down and create natural air pockets and air tunnels in our soil. And they'll release all the good things that rotting plant matter releases back into the soil. And in doing that, we're enriching it. And so I remove as little as possible from our growing areas once the plants are spent or finished. Um, I leave a lot of it lay and let it decompose naturally. Now, those air tunnels allow for what's called aerobic decomposition. Um, that means there's air there. Anaerobic would mean that it's deprived of air. And different things live in the soil based on its composition, what is breaking down, and whether there's aerobic or anaerobic decomposition happening. Now, we've got almost enough seeds. And then we're gonna go plant some of these in a flat. And I'll explain why we do that here on our farm. I'll see you on the front porch. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Camping World of Aldosta, located in Lake Park, is your one-stop destination for all your camping needs. Stop by to see your dreams of quality time with your family become a reality. Whether it's tailgating with your air-conditioned camper, taking a trip to the mountains or beach with your family, or driving your motorhome to a faraway destination, Camping World has it all. Let us put you and your family in a camper for as little as $99 per month. And remember, when you buy a camper from Camping World of Valdosta, you receive a free Elite Good Sam membership, roadside assistance, and travel assist for one year. Subway, the Corner Pantry, and the Argyle Food Market are locally owned by Mr. Nick Patel, who thanks the Clinch County Homerville communities for all their support. Subway, located on West Dame Avenue in Homerville, is the go-to place for nutritious, healthy food, and Subway also serves a delicious breakfast each morning. We have a catering platters to meet all your tailgating needs. Don't forget to drop by the Corner Pantry in Homerville 
in the Argyle Food Market in Argyle and pick up all the items you need at the best discount prices in Clinch County. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency is locally owned has been a part of the Homerville Clinch County community for many years. Jeff Brown and Eric Lutz make it a priority to know their clients on a personal basis and take pride in customizing insurance coverage for the particular needs of each customer. They offer all lines of insurance including auto, home, business, life insurance, annuities, and bonds. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency, East Dame Avenue, Homerville. Since 1972, Popeyes has been serving up mouth-watering, delicious, hot, and mild fried chicken and chicken tenders from its Louisiana kitchen. You know about our great chicken, but have you tried our tasty seafood? All of our menu items come with a southern style all their own. On your way to or after the game, stop by Popeyes and remember we can handle all your special event catering needs. Conveniently located on Memorial Drive in Waycross, Popeyes puts a piece of Louisiana in every single meal. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV. Welcome to my front porch. This and the kitchen are kind of the center of our house. And we sit out here whenever possible. So I'm gonna take some collard green seeds that we collected from bolted collard green plants and we're packaging some up for friends and we're starting some in trays. Now, we don't start everything in trays. We direct sow quite a few things here on the farm, but we found that if you start what you can in trays, then when you go to put them in the beds, you don't have blank spots where things have failed to germinate. We can also put out a larger plant, and we don't have to worry as much about our guineas or something going in and um, damaging or destroying the fragile seedlings as they emerge. So we're um, putting collard greens in these trays, and we're going to keep them very wet. We're actually gonna start them indoors. Um, it's still a little hot this time of year, and um, we want them to come up very strong at a more moderate temperature. Everything in the brassica family prefers a moderate temperature, even a cool temperature. Um, we once had broccoli that was thriving after multiple snowfalls. We were eating it out of the snow. So we're going to Put these seeds in, cover them lightly. Now, a collard seed is very small, and so it doesn't take much cover. There's a general rule that you can um, cover a seed with one to two times its own height in soil. Um, I'm not that precise about it, but you'll find you don't need to be. So we're gonna put these in here, and then we're just gonna lightly dust them. And you'll find when you put the initial water on this dry starting mix, um, that some of it's going to get sloshed around. So you can cover it a little bit heavier than, than twice its own height in these flats. But um, we do direct sow um, most of the things in the cucurbit family. So um, a lot of our melons, our cucumbers, I'm especially fond of cucumbers. And for those of you here in a hotter climate, we recommend the Armenian cucumber for your summer cucumber. Not your pickler, but for your summer fresh eating cucumber. It is sweet, it likes the heat, it's very thin skinned, and it's easy to propagate. And what's more, they're really large. You can get a solid green, a solid almost white, or a striped variety, which is very pretty, and they do really well down here, and they can grow up to three feet long before they turn into mostly seed, and they're no longer desirable as a fresh eater. So we're big fans of the Armenian cucumber, and you'll find those at local markets. We're not the only growers in the area that are growing those now. We spread that seed two years ago to everyone that would accept it. But for right now, we'll get these started in the house. And then if you do start seeds indoors to elongate your season, 
I recommend, and I think everyone does, um, setting them outside before you actually transplant them into the ground. Give them about a week to acclimate to the temperature, to the natural light, to any biological stressors that might be out there. And then if something drastic happens, like in the spring, an unexpected late frost, you can bring them inside that night and spare them. Whereas had you direct sown them, they would have been vulnerable and required much more effort, like a row cover or some kind of heat source. So this is, um, makes our lives a little easier. All right, so the collard greens are almost sown, and we'll take those in for watering. And we actually have a shelf in our dining room that is our plant shelf. And we put these trays on it, and it's rigged with full-spectrum lighting so that I can control the day length for these seeds. Now, day length, and really more specifically, night length, are indicators to plants of the time of year and whether they should be producing or not, whether it's safe to produce or not. And it's really amazing how in tune they are to those things. So we manipulate that a little bit in the house to elongate our season. Sometimes you'll find that we start tomatoes in February indoors, and then instead of going to a plant center to purchase them, we can take them outside and transplant them um, as soon as our frost threat is passed. Um, and really with tomatoes, as soon as the threat of temperatures prolonged under 50 degrees are passed, because that tells the tomato plant that it's going to be a rough year and not to produce as much. So if you can, protect your tomatoes until they're not going to spend very long under 50 degrees. Um, I'm going to move on to some onions now. Now, usually a root crop, you would start in the ground. Most people would, or you'd buy sets the little bulbs at the store. Um, we have some varieties of onions that we just love that are fine in our local soil. And so we buy those and I start them in trays. They actually transplant quite well. We don't um, shake them off and abuse them too much, but they transplant well and they still bulb beautifully. So I'm gonna move on to those. All right. Now you'll notice the last flat had fewer cells. These are called cells, and this one has quite a few. And that's because we plant a couple hundred onions a month um, to share with others and because we eat a lot of alliums in our house. So um, we're going to do these in this, and um, we'll transplant them in about three weeks when they're just little thread-like things about this tall. And then when their tops get four to six inches, we're actually going to um, nip off the tops a little bit to um, encourage better root development through the life of the plant. So um, there's some debate about how effective it is, but it's worth the few minutes it takes. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Camping World of Valdosta, located in Lake Park, is your one-stop destination for all your camping needs. Stop by to see your dreams of quality time with your family become a reality. Whether it's tailgating with your air-conditioned camper, taking a trip to the mountains or beach with your family, or driving your motorhome to a faraway destination, Camping World has it all. Let us put you and your family in a camper for as little as $99 per month. And remember, when you buy a camper from Camping World of Valdosta, you receive a free Elite Good Sam membership, roadside assistance, and travel assist for one year. Carter's Fried Chicken in Homerville has become the gold standard for fried chicken barbecue and catering. Carter's also offers a full menu of other tasty items and is open on Sunday. Thanks, Chad Brown, for making dining at Carter's a family tradition in Homerville. Subway, the Corner Pantry, and the Argyle Food Market are locally owned by Mr. Nick Patel, who thanks the Clinch County Homerville communities for all their support. Subway, located on West Dame Avenue in Homerville, is the go-to place for nutritious, healthy food, and Subway also serves a delicious breakfast each morning. We have a catering platters to meet all your tailgating needs. Don't forget to drop by the Corner Pantry in Homerville and the Argyle Food Market in Argyle and pick up all the items you need at the best discount prices in Clinch County. Want to learn more about rural America? 
Watch Creek Box TV. So I'm here in another one of our garden beds, and this one, we put up a fence and we're using it as a trellis for our Italian long beans. These are a really prolific long bean that have to be picked at least once a day. So if you're already out cutting okra, you might as well pick your beans as well. Um, they're best eaten really rapidly after they've been picked, but they put off so much food. So I highly recommend them and they're beautiful. I love the purple flowers. Um, and now, I think we've got most of these. Let's go over here and get some flowers for my table. Now you'll notice I'm walking all over watermelon vines right now. And these are dahlias. I believe they're in the zinnia family. You'll notice they just look like giant zinnias. We have them everywhere. They're really attractive to pollinators. They also, because of their size, are helping to shade our determinate tomatoes. So determinate tomatoes are tomatoes that, as opposed to heirlooms, um, heirloom beef steaks, generally ripen around the same time. So you have a shorter harvest window, but that allows you to put them up easier, right? You can go in for a week every day with a bucket and put those up instead of having them trickle in and maybe some go bad while I'm waiting for enough to can. So we use these for shade for tomatoes because in the deep south, tomatoes get a little heat stressed in the middle of summer. All right, so I'm going to take some of these flowers that are down on the ground for my table. Now, you'll notice I'm walking around all these watermelons. What you can't see right now are pickling cucumbers on a trellis and okra. And then I've got this hedge of food growing around. Our sweet corn was in the middle of this patch here. It's now dried and the stalks are ready to be taken down and used for the horses. We focus on intercropping in our gardens. We focus on companion planting and putting things together that are beneficial for each other, like the dahlias to shade the tomatoes. Um, earlier in the season, there was a hedgerow of sunflowers around this to do the same as they came up. So why does this diversity matter besides the obvious that I just mentioned benefits to an individual plant that I'm trying to cultivate? Well, diversity is a really, really huge issue. It's not just a matter of convenience. It's a matter of soil health. These different depth root systems are drawing nutrients from different areas. These different varieties of plants are using different nutrients and returning different nutrients to the soil. So we're maintaining this healthy biological balance when we plant things together. And this is why um, we see so much soil degradation one of the reasons in large monocropping operations. So we try and keep things mixed up here. And this is not convenient if we were mechanically harvesting. That kind of intercropping takes a high level of skill. But for us on our farm, we're mixing everything together, planting everything in a way that we're helping our soil and helping the plants that we're eating. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency is locally owned has been a part of the Homerville, Clinch County community for many years. Jeff Brown and Eric Lutz make it a priority to know their clients on a personal basis and take pride in customizing insurance coverage for the particular needs of each customer. They offer all lines of insurance including auto, home, business, life insurance, annuities, and bonds. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency, East Dame Avenue, Homerville. Lee Engineering and Construction Company in DuPont, Georgia has been a part of the community since 1935 and is proud to support Clinch County Athletics. The prayer of the entire Lee Engineering family is that our Lord and Savior will richly bless our schools, community, and nation. Camping World of Aldosta, located in Lake Park, is your one-stop destination for all your camping needs. 
Stop by to see your dreams of quality time with your family become a reality. Whether it's tailgating with your air-conditioned camper, taking a trip to the mountains or beach with your family, or driving your motorhome to a faraway destination, Camping World has it all. Let us put you and your family in a camper for as little as $99 per month. And remember, when you buy a camper from Camping World of Valdosta, you receive a free Elite Good Sam membership, roadside assistance, and travel assist for one year. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV. So we're here at yet another garden on our property. And something that we learned a couple of years in was that we had a problem with cross-pollination. All this biodiversity is amazing, and we knew we were getting that part right. But then we would look around, oh, a baby ladybug. Then we would look around, that's a good thing. And we would have trouble with, say, some of the heirloom tomatoes um, cross-pollinating with tomatillos. So we found out that things like cucurbits, um, your squash family, some of the tomatoes, especially corn, need to be separated so that they don't cross-pollinate and adulterate the crop you were expecting. And so we have set up three very separate gardens on our property. And you'll note over here, these have a little diatomaceous earth left on them because we had a slug problem. You'll note over here, I've got my heirlooms and I have my determinant or canner tomatoes in a different location. We also had corn over here because we grow not just sweet corn, but popcorn. That was a raging success. I highly recommend it. So biodiversity for us also necessitates spreading out a little bit. We companion plant and we know when to separate. Some of it's trial and error and some of it you can do the research on. I get asked a lot if I have a favorite tomato because as far as annuals go, everyone seems to love tomatoes. And I do. Any black tomato, they're called black, they're really purple, and in this sun, pink, are the sweetest, most wonderfully acidic tomatoes I've ever had. So as soon as I rinse the diatomaceous earth off of these, they're going into my mouth. <laughs> so these beds, these three beds, were dug down three feet, which you can do in our local sand with relative ease. You would never dream of doing that in rockier ground. Um, and we filled those in with compost mixed with a little of the native soil and some other um, biological augmentation. And these are our garlic beds every winter because garlic doesn't love our native soil. Um, and it looks like this one's overcome with weeds, but that's a matter of perspective. These are covering up our ground, our soil. And you'll find in nature, there's no time really when the ground is allowed to be completely bare like in the first bed that's been hand weeded already. And so since this bed is resting from its job as a garlic bed all through our winter and spring, um, I've allowed this nice ground cover um, into the bed. Now you can deliberately sow ground cover or cover crops or smother crops if it's meant to choke out other weeds. Um, or in the case of this low ground cover that's so easy to remove, you can leave what's happening there naturally. And by removing this nice, easy to move carpet, isn't that simple? We can leave it here to decompose for a couple months until it's planting time. And we can keep our ground covered and we can keep the nutrients in the bed well, with very little work. Now, when a bed is planted, as this one is, 
and you'd like to avoid these. You can companion plant or square foot garden where you plant things very close together. Or you can use a um, mulching system, some kind of a ground cover. The term mulch in gardening can refer to um, plastic or cloth covers. It can refer to chipped or shredded wood or biological material, um, straw, pine, or wheat. It can refer to anything that's used as a ground cover that you put there. And so we've put chipped wood on this to keep the weeds at bay so that we don't have as much competition. Anything in the allium family, leeks, onions, garlic, scallions, none of it likes competition particularly. So um, we do mulch them um, to keep it down. Now they also don't like to be kept soaking wet because you'll get some rot in that bulb. And so um, this bed being raised and very, very well drained allows us to mulch around alliums. But we're gonna remove the rest of this. We're gonna remove the rest of this and we're gonna turn it over with its roots exposed to let it break down in this bed. And then in a couple months, anything that hasn't broke down or anything that's come back can just be easily removed and our garlic can be planted for our winter crop. Then we will mulch it to keep it um, protected in case the winter gets harsh. And um, in the spring, we should have beautiful heads of garlic. We do about 500 a year here. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Dairy Queen is a proud part of our local communities and is cheering our sports teams on to championship seasons. Drop by before and after the game to say hello to Mr. Ash and his entire crew and enjoy the full Dairy Queen menu including our famous grilled burgers, artisan style sandwiches, and chicken strips. Cool off with our renowned smoothies, slushies, malts, and iced coffees. Try our fabulous desserts and take an ice cream cake home for that special occasion or just to treat the family. Dine in or take out at Dairy Queen locations in Homerville, Blackshire, Folkestone, and Fernandina Beach. See you at the DQ. Lee Engineering and Construction Company in DuPont, Georgia has been a part of the community since 1935 and is proud to support Clinch County Athletics. The prayer of the entire Lee Engineering family is that our Lord and Savior will richly bless our schools, community, and nation. Since 1972, Popeyes has been serving up mouth-watering, delicious, hot, and mild fried chicken and chicken tenders from its Louisiana kitchen. You know about our great chicken, but have you tried our tasty seafood? All of our menu items come with a southern style all their own. On your way to or after the game, stop by Popeyes and remember we can handle all your special event catering needs. Conveniently located on Memorial Drive in Waycross, Popeyes puts a piece of Louisiana in every single meal. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV. So I'm here with some of my hot peppers and an area that's about to be planted in cover crops to enrich the soil. And hot peppers grow really well in the sand where we live. Um, they don't mind when it gets dry. Um, they have great variants of flavor. They really, really thrive without us paying much attention to them. So we grow a lot of them. And in order to use them with as much versatility as possible in our diets, um, we can them, and we can them with different recipes, sometimes using sugar, which creates a beautiful contrast between the heat and the sweet, so we love that. But I'm gonna pick these peppers, and speaking of things that grow really well in our natural soil, part of our transition from being conventional growers to being regenerative growers was because we discovered there was great difficulty, or I should just say, a great difference in what would thrive in different areas. And 
it made some of the formulas that I had learned in conventional agriculture, in college and um, working for industrial growers, it made some of those formulas less effective. And as we started looking at some of the things that we were using and some of the precautions on labels that um, we only sometimes adhered to, um, we realized that maybe we needed to re-examine um, what I had learned in school, what I had learned on the job at large industrial, you know, commercial monocropping operations. So we had to re-examine everything we thought we knew about food, about soil, about nutrients and the nutrient cycle that we're all part of. And that is a long journey. <laughs> it's a huge paradigm shift to go from the idea that when you encounter a weed or an insect or a fungus, that you just need to pull out whatever gun necessary to eliminate it, to this idea that maybe it's telling us something, maybe it's not detrimental, um, and maybe we needed a different approach if we were gonna be ingesting the highest possible quality food. So it's been a long journey and I'm still on it. Um, and these peppers look beautiful, by the way. We have a variety in another row that's larger. I'm a fan of these smaller jalapenos this year because in this growing season, in this particular uh, biology, these have just the right amount of pepper flavor, kind of a green pepper flavor, and the heat that I like to add subtly with a jalapeno. So I think these are a really balanced pepper. I'm really pleased this year, and I do think I'm going to go ahead and sugar pickle these. But these have been grown without anything being added during their growth cycle. What we have done is enrich our soils by growing cover crops. We've enriched our soils with the use of animal composts and worm tea, which is liquid gold if you're a grower. And we've changed the composition and enhanced our soil biology. Instead of killing off the biology in our soil so that we have total control over it, we've worked hard to enhance the biology of our soil. So um, when we use something like a cover crop, or sometimes we call it a smother crop when we're trying to choke out an undesirable plant, um, Sometimes we call it a green manure when its major purpose is to return OM and nutrients to the soil so that they can break down and be reused. Um, we've used these quite a bit. In fact, I have a stand I'll show you in a minute of sun hemp that's absolutely beautiful. But right now we will finish picking these peppers that have had such a good start in life because of the healthy soil in which they're being grown. Now, you'll notice that there's some weeds here. And I grew up with the idea that if you were doing a good job, your fields and um, to extrapolate there, your garden were clean, clean. All right, um, and this was before we understood much about the microbiome and the little things that make everything function and work and nutrients break down. So what I've had to do is I've had to, in my paradigm shift, get rid of this idea of clean. And instead of looking at every plant I didn't intentionally sow as a potential or as an enemy that I would get rid of, the first thing we say is, why is it growing there? Plants are opportunistic. And so we wanna say, what is it about this soil that's encouraging this species to thrive? Um, we wanna say, is it actually detrimental or is it beneficial? Because on a garden scale, I can tell you, there have been many times we've pulled weeds and in doing so, removed the shade that our other plants, our annuals were dependent on and killed the annuals as a result. So there are times when our plants are already producing and perhaps they're enjoying the shade of whatever is growing around them. And I just don't reference it as a weed. That plant is doing a job for us. 
So weeds can tell you about your soil, about your moisture levels. If you've ever had dollar weed invade an area, you know that means that area is too wet, right? So we've had all these questions that we've had to start asking before we decide if we're going to remove or crimp or eradicate in some way a species that is in our garden. And with that, I think we should go take a look at the cover crops over here in the sun hemp. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Dairy Queen is a proud part of our local communities and is cheering our sports teams on to championship seasons. Drop by before and after the game to say hello to Mr. Ash and his entire crew and enjoy the full Dairy Queen menu including our famous grilled burgers, artisan style sandwiches, and chicken strips. Cool off with our renowned smoothies, slushies, malts, and iced coffees. Try our fabulous desserts and take an ice cream cake home for that special occasion or just to treat the family. Dine in or take out at Dairy Queen locations in Homerville, Blackshire, Folkestone, and Fernandina Beach. See you at the DQ. Carter's Fried Chicken in Homerville has become the gold standard for fried chicken barbecue and catering. Carter's also offers a full menu of other tasty items and is open on Sunday. Thanks, Chad Brown, for making dining at Carter's a family tradition in Homerville. Lee Engineering and Construction Company in DuPont, Georgia has been a part of the community since 1935 and is proud to support Clinch County Athletics. The prayer of the entire Lee Engineering family is that our Lord and Savior will richly bless our schools, community, and nation. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV. So here we are in an area that I'm still testing things, but let me tell you what we found. This is sun hemp, and this is rapidly becoming one of my favorite cover crops. Now, the first time I planted this, it was just over my knees, and it flowered and it was done. We crimped it down, and it became organic matter breaking down on the ground and returning nutrients to the soil that it had pulled up through its roots. It's a great cycle. You'll notice this second planting hasn't flowered yet, and it's pretty tall. So I'm really excited about the amount of organic matter that this is gonna return when it's crimped down. Um, if you've seen people use straw as a ground cover, when this dries, you end up with a little bit of that, but you also end up with um, a composting situation where it's breaking down to return those nutrients. So we really, really love this, and this enhances our soil. So our local soil is mostly sand, straight sand. Soil judging teams have a very easy time with this. Um, but what we're finding on our third and fourth season of doing test areas of cover crops, sometimes we call them smother crops because we're intentionally trying to smother out and outcompete a plant that we don't want growing in the area. Um, and sometimes we just call them green manures. Um, but what, what we're doing by continually putting these, growing these, and then putting them back on our ground is adding organic matter to our soil and creating a richer soil. A soil that um, doesn't just leach water straight through. Um, it holds and retains a little moisture and it has a steady supply of nutrients for our plants. So this is part of our soil enhancement program. And this is part of the nutrient cycle that we're trying to manage for optimum plant growth and optimum soil fertility and a nice healthy living soil on our farm as opposed to using something that ends inside and is going to CIDE and is going to um, kill off some of the life in our soil. So it's a completely different way of thinking about our jobs as growers that we tend our soil and our soil then repays us with all of this wonderful produce. So, let me show you on the other side of the sun hemp another project of ours. This is another cover crop that we've been working with. My kids love to save the seeds. This is amaranth. And 
Before it dried and the seed heads were ready for harvest, this amaranth was a beautiful plant with gorgeous magenta colored flowers that stood about this tall. And you can see now they've dried into these uh, brown, multi-headed dried seed stalks like this. And you can see there's a little bit of chafe coming off right now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and we're gonna save this seed for the next round of planting. And amaranth is actually a relatively easy seed to save. In addition to using it as a cover crop, you can also eat the leaves, like a salad green. So this is a multi-purpose crop, and we're very excited to have found something that really thrives in our hot climate and has so many different uses and purposes. Now we found it doesn't work well as a smother crop. It is not choking out the other plants in the area, but it's very hardy, it's very edible, it's full of all kinds of nutrients, and it's a level of seed saving that even my children can participate in with great success. So this is the third generation of seed we've planted from our own amaranth seed here on the farm. We're gonna cut these off, we're gonna take them in, and then we're going to gently knock the seeds, which are very tiny. If you've ever eaten amaranth, they're very tiny. It makes like a porridge. Um, we're gonna knock it all off like so, and it just comes falling off, if you can see that. And then we're going to take a fan and we're going to hold it in the air over a tray and we're gonna let the seeds fall and the chaff blow away. And that's how we separate it out. We'll also then run it through a sieve that has um, a, a fine mesh that will help get the rest of it out so that we don't end up with all this chaff in our food. And we'll package it up, we'll keep it in a dry dark place until it's time to plant the next round. If you like a pretty cover crop and you like to experiment, I highly recommend amaranth. And it's not only in magenta, you can also get it in green and yellow and bright red. So you can see this one still has a little bit of color. We will take this in. We will crimp the existing plants in this bed down to the ground, breaking them off and effectively killing them so that they act as a ground cover as they um, break down and degenerate and return those nutrients. And then we will replant this area until we reach a level of organic matter in our soil that is showing us um, good water retention and uh, strong nutrition for our food crops that we'll put in this very spot in the spring. Hi, I'm Katie Rogers. I hope you'll be right back after this message to join me. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency is locally owned has been a part of the Homerville, Clinch County community for many years. Jeff Brown and Eric Lutz make it a priority to know their clients on a personal basis and take pride in customizing insurance coverage for the particular needs of each customer. They offer all lines of insurance including auto, home, business, life insurance, annuities, and bonds. Lutz, Brown, Piegler, and Manley Insurance Agency East Dame Avenue, Homerville. Since 1972, Popeyes has been serving up mouth-watering, delicious, hot, and mild fried chicken and chicken tenders from its Louisiana kitchen. You know about our great chicken, but have you tried our tasty seafood? All of our menu items come with a southern style all their own. On your way to or after the game, stop by Popeyes and remember we can handle all your special event catering needs. Conveniently located on Memorial Drive in Waycross, Popeyes puts a piece of Louisiana in every single meal. Dairy Queen is a proud part of our local communities and is cheering our sports teams on to championship seasons. Drop by before and after the game to say hello to Mr. Ash and his entire crew and enjoy the full Dairy Queen menu including our famous grilled burgers, artisan style sandwiches, and chicken strips. Cool off with our renowned smoothies, slushies, malts, and iced coffees. Try our fabulous desserts and take an ice cream cake home for that special occasion or just to treat the family. Dine in or take out at Dairy Queen locations in Homerville, Blackshire, Folkestone, and Fernandina Beach. See you at the DQ. Want to learn more about rural America? Watch Creekbox TV.
So I'm here on the porch of my chicken coop where I take my coffee almost every day. And it's really hot out and I'm filthy and that's normal for me. So why am I doing this? Why is our family spending this amount of time and effort and willpower and brain power to try and grow most of our food and to enhance this piece of earth that we're using? Well, we probably have to go back to how I grew up. I grew up um, in the Midwest, for the most part, in a industrial farming community. Um, they were large family owned farms for the most part. And um, that was my world. And those are my people. So I went to college and I went to one of the best ag schools in the world. And I spent a couple years in the ag program. And then I changed majors as some of us are wont to do. <laughs> and I went back and by default, as we moved around the country with my husband's job, I would take jobs in the agriculture world, in the ag sector. I still had friends and family um, working in large monocrop ag operations. And so it was easy for me to step right back into that world and to work hard. And I don't regret a minute of it. But at some point, I started questioning things. And I started questioning where I was getting my information. And when I did that, it led me to a wholesale um, re-examination of my beliefs about food and about agriculture, about um, ideas of not just sustainability, but um, regeneration. And I had to change some of my beliefs about our modern paradigm. So we thought that in order to put our money and our time where our thoughts were, we were going to become homesteaders and we were going to actually try and implement the things that we were learning. And that's where we are now. We're five years into implementing ideas about regenerative agriculture and what kind of food we want to make our bodies and our children's bodies out of. And that leaves me on the coop porch every morning having my coffee and assessing what our family is going to do today to continue in this grand experiment. So my family is passionate about local food. We're so passionate that we're growing as much as we can of our own food in the time that we have allotted. And it grows every year. But I hope that what you're experiencing as we learn together about food in our region, about our soil and our growers, about the people that are distributing it to us and how it gets to our plate, I hope that you're feeling inspired. Even if you don't have space for growing and you don't have much time for growing, every one of us is capable of getting a pot and starting with at least some fresh herbs, maybe some salad greens, something simple. And watching that grow and experiencing that is transformative. So I encourage you, continue educating yourself about local food, about ethical food, be inspired and move forward. Take a step in that direction in your personal life. I love going around and interviewing farmers, growers, and producers, in case you can't tell, and I'm so glad that I get to bring you along with me. Being on a farm is such an amazing experience, particularly if it's not an experience you have every single day. But to walk outside and to have so much open space is remarkable. What else is remarkable is that it's a completely different lifestyle in a lot of ways than what we experience when we're not in this environment. For instance, on the farm, there's always piles of lumber. There's always projects to do. Everything breaks eventually, and we do our best to keep up with all of it. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with us on these adventures. I hope you felt inspired, and I hope you've gotten a taste of what life is like out here. Join us next week as we go foraging for mushrooms with Ansel Jacques of Swampy Appleseed Mushrooms and get to experience where he grows his mushrooms for market and for restaurants here in South Georgia. And thanks for being a part of Katie on the Farm.
Thank you for watching Creekbox TV.